Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you for joining us, Pearls with Veronica. Thank you for tuning us on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us and share the file. I'm Jerry Rose Live Worldwide, and welcome to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to episode 25 of Pearls with Veronica, a podcast based on the transparency of loss, grief, and adversities that we encounter as we navigate through our different seasons in life. I'd like to thank God and his servant, Jerry Roy, and the Positive Power Double XI Christian Media family for this platform of transparency and healing. The Bible teaches us in Ecclesiastes 3, there was a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. My guest tonight is Dr. Eric L. Holmes, a native of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He is an author, certified life coach, and a servant of God, and has been featured in the Mogul Leader of the Week magazine. Dr. Holmes is a senior coordinator in the otolaryngology Department at John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. His fervor to excel in Push's abilities has led him to earn an impressive number of awards at John Hopkins. With a passion and dedication to further his education and help others through his teachings, Dr. Holmes has earned a bachelor's and master's degree in biblical studies and theology and master's and doctorate in Christian education at North Carolina College of Theology. Good evening, and thank you, Dr. Holmes, for accepting Pearls with Veronica's invitation. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and thank you so very much for the opportunity and always positive power. We can feel the power um, that man, Mr. Jerry Royce Live, and thank you all uh, for this opportunity to share on this amazing show, this amazing podcast. Um, thank you so very much. I'm humbled and I'm honored anytime the privilege to share and to just share uh, what God is doing, what God has done, and just the awesomeness of God. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. And I'm excited about tonight's, um, you know, tonight's episode. Tell us more about Dr. Holmes before he became Dr. Holmes. Um, as my pastor would always say, what's on my birth certificate or what's on my driver's license? Um, you know, I'm a native, as you said, um, from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, born and raised, went to school, went to college, um, moved here 27 years ago, um, go to one of the greatest churches on this side of heaven, the Bethel Temple Church of Christ, 
located at 3910 West Rogers Avenue. The Bishop Richard J. Pender and um, always honor the life and legacy of the late Apostle Robert Evans, um, a 24-year uh, year employee of Johns Hopkins Hospital. Um, I am an essential employee. Um, I am just a servant who said yes. Um, just grateful um, for what God has done and what God is doing. Um, just a student of ever learning. I'm always willing to learn and wanting to learn um, the more. And all I want to do is just be that light and be who God has called me to be. And so, you know, all in that shell, um, I'm just a humble servant who said yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you for being that humble servant, servant and for saying yes to the call. The power of the seed. The rule of reciprocity holds true in most areas of our lives. When we receive a blessing, we are more likely to give back. Tell us about the power of the seed. Oh, uh, wow. And what inspired that, and what inspired you to write the power of the seed? Uh, wow. The power of the seed, of <laughs> course. Um, I've actually been doing a teaching on it. Um, and the power of the seed is such an, an amazing, awesome book. It's God inspired. It was a divine assignment. Um, one Saturday, asking God, as I was praying for my pastor and first lady, one Saturday morning at 5 a.m., one of my prayer times, and I asked God to bless me with a project um, to be a blessing to them, to ministry, to the kingdom. And as I uh, got up from prayer, went in the kitchen, opened the door to the deck, there's a tree. And um, I love telling this is that. Uh, the tree had changed color and he said from a seed to a tree he said your season just changed your season just changed and so when i turned around he said put it in a book uh, the power of the seed and right there that moment that he gave that moment that uh that revelation that door of opportunity i began to draw the tree and i wrote down the power of the seed and it's so amazing because i still have it and, you know, with social media, it gave me a reminder that five years ago <laughs> is when it was released. It, and I was like, wow. And and so I began to do that. So what I did was I sent it to a buddy of mine who's a graphic designer. And so it was about like 545, 45 in the morning. He's probably saying, what in the world is Dr. E sending me at this time of the morning? But that door <laughs> of opportunity, that Kairos moment that he gave me, um, is that I begin to put it into action. And so a lot of times we could miss that moment. We can miss the opportunity. And so the thing about it was, is I just began to just do the work. And so the power of the seed, which has been a tremendous blessing, like all over, um, it, it really teaches, as a matter of fact, I'm teaching it this month, is that, you know, to people to understand how powerful the seed is and this, uh, the root of retroprocity and, and, and from the, you know, the seed time and harvesting, you know, um, it starts with process and preparation, the seeding, the sowing, the planting, the harvesting. And so what one must understand in the giving and it's biblically based. Um, and so the power of the seed is such a powerful divine assignment. I don't call my book uh, just a book because it was a divine assignment and it was God inspired. And so, um, it has done an outstanding work, and to God be the glory, because it's in so many of the libraries, um, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, Dolphin County, and so people are really understanding this whole process when it comes to seed time and harvest, this whole process of, you know, before you can um, plant, before you can seed, you is got to go, you've got to go through the process and preparation, then you can plant seed, but then you got to handle the mental process of it which is the watering, the nurturing, the harvesting, and then you can look for the harvest at the appointed time. And so it gives believers and non-believers the understanding in that whole process from the natural as the agricultural aspect from the farmer and the spiritual aspect as to the believer um, when the farmer does it as a way of living and the produce that it is comes out of it is that it's a way of living. But then the revelation, what he sees, he sees from the beginning, yet he sees the end, knowing that he got to work the middle process. For the believer, we see, we sow, and we're looking for a harvest. And so the thing about it is from the natural to the spiritual, it allows you to know how powerful it is and that you must sow into good ground. Uh, and so it goes through the whole biblical principles and parables of seed time and harvest, seeding and sowing, planting and the reaping process of it. 
So you're teaching this um, in, as a um, Bible study um, lesson? It's or a, Yeah, or I'm teaching it on, actually on a conference with someone. And so um, it, 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 that I love it because it, it, it helps us to understand our seed does have power and everything starts with a seed. And so, but you got to go through the process and preparation before you can even see so or plant. But you got to make sure that the ground is ready. You got to make sure that you're seeding and sowing into good ground. And so whether I'm planting seed, an idea or suggestion, you know what I mean? Whether you got to lay that groundwork um, for something that can develop or expand in the future. Explain to us the, the process and preparation because you stated that it comes before seed time. Explain Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, with the farmer. I want to learn. One thing, mm -hmm. one thing about the farmer is that he's got to get, he gets on a track. He, you know, he's got to get the ground ready. He's pulling, he's overturning the dirt. He's making sure he's getting the ground ready. And so once he's gotten the foundation, once he's gotten the ground ready, once he's gotten all of that practice and preparation out of the way here, now he can plant. Now he can see the whatever he's going to plant. And so that preparation process is key and order, uh, before you plant or you sow or you seed or whatever you're planting. However, it is important with the process and preparation. And so he goes through that. Then once he, he begins to seed and he begins to plant, whether it's corn, you know, whatever it is that he's planting or he's seeding. And so now it begins the process of that yeah. seed, which is going to germinate through the underground process. But here it is. We get stuck in the middle of the process because it's that middle process. It's that middle waiting period, but you got to do something with the middle. And when God gave me this revelation, said, don't get stuck in the middle of the process. And so mm. here it is. If Genesis 8 and 22 says, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed, time and harvest. Isaiah picks it up in 55 and 10 said, listen, he gives seed to the store. Paul picks it up in Galatians 6 and 9 and said, listen, you don't have to get weary. You got a harvest coming just on faith. But all while he gets up to there, there's a middle process that you got to water, you got to nurture, you got to harvest it. And so then as that seed germinates through the underground process, it gets to the set time and season because here it is with the farmer. It may not be the same year that the harvest may come. So he's got to start it all over again. And so we okay. have to start this God of kin. It, 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 when you talk about the rule of retroactivity, and when you talk about the thing about it is you got to, it's an ongoing process. An ongoing process. So a lot of times um, we get stuck in the middle. The middle, um, I would say the pruning part of it, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, well, yeah, you can, it, it, exactly, because here it is. If you go out in your yard and you know you want to plant new grass or you want to plant grass seeds, and you've got to get in there and do the work, get all the weeds out. Because even from the scripture, when it talks about uh, whether it falls on good ground, stony ground, you got to make sure that you got the ground ready because it's going to choke the seed. And so if you don't clear out all the weeds, if you don't do the necessary work, that process, that preparation before you plant those grass seeds, or if you planting watermelon seeds or whatever you're planting, right. you got to make sure you do the necessary work. Just like with baking a cake, if you want to have a good product, it takes the necessary preparation and the work. Then the ingredients, then the mixing, then all of that. Then you got to put it in the oven and bake it. Oven, right? Because you got to prepare the pans for it. <laughs> but you don't want it Process sticking. Process preparation is <laughs> key. Process. Process and preparation is key. I am taking notes. Process and preparation is key. So I'm looking here. Um, don't choke the seed. I like that. Don't choke the seed. It's a process. It's a process. I am sorry if I'm taking notes while we are um, interviewing. That's all good. <laughs> That's it. That's all good. <laughs> because um, I find myself um, personally um in stuck and in and, and, and when you're saying stuck like in that middle period sometimes you know we repeat cycles and god has to you know we repeat cycles and because we didn't learn the lesson the, the first time and then we didn't learn it mm -hmm. the second time then we got to go back around that 
circle again to, like you say, to, to prepare ourselves all over again, and then the light bulb will click off. Then the light bulb clicks. Oh, I'm supposed to do this. This is what I need to be doing. And I love when you said about, you know, um, how God um, inspires you early in the morning. And, and that's a lot of times. That's how, you know, he deals with me, like, when it's really quiet, um, there's no distractions. You can hear the voice of the, you can hear the voice of the Lord before your day actually starts. You know, you commune with Him, and I'm I, because I feel like right now well, I need to get on to that to that um, conference with you. I, I need to really listen to and and purchase this book, um, the Power of the Sea, because sometimes I feel like I'm stuck in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, like what am I supposed to do now? And then sometimes my mind will go back. Um, to before I became a widow, and I know that I can't stay in that mindset of before I became a widow, I have to live forward. And I think with me, um, I know what me is like, um, cold feet and fear at times. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to fail at it. <laughs> um, and I know it just it's just a mindset in me having to, um, to process, like you say, process and prepare and not, don't get stuck in the middle. You have to be patient. Yes, and that's where a lot of things happen. It's that middle process. It's a waiting, whether we're waiting on a blessing, waiting on a miracle, waiting on God to do something that we prayed about. And so here it is, just like us or just like even the farmer, if he gets stuck in the middle of the process, he's not going to have a finished product. He's not going to have a harvest because he's stuck in the middle right here. But in that middle process, he's got to do the work. And he's got to water, he's got to nurture, he's got to harvest it in order for this seed to continue to germinate through the underground process. So if I get stuck in the middle of my process, I can't move forward because I'm sitting here stuck. Mm. And so a lot of times it, in that middle process, it's so important. And so when God said, don't get stuck in the middle of the process, how you handle the middle process is going to determine your outcome. And so here it is. One's return is determined by his investment. The giver has to be uh, have a willing heart and a sincere desire to participate, even say in an offering or uh, when it says give and it shall be given. But even as Isaiah declared, as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but water the earth and make it it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. But here it is: your seed has power to produce. Mm. Power to produce our seed. But we must in you. Yes, power to produce. And so here it is, is that if I don't see, if I don't plan, I cannot expect a harvest. No planting, no harvest. (laughs) I'm taking no, no planting, no harvest. So would it be, um, so I'm going to use an example. Um, I always use my daughter, Olivia, as an an example. Um, She's a hurdler she didn't that wasn't her main event her main event was not the hurdles um she began running track in middle school so um you can say to cultivate what that gift that god gave her um she would she would practice she would train year-round she never took a vacation so we she doesn't know what summer vacations look like because she was training year-round to perfect the craft you know to perfect the gift that god gave her so i look at it as planting the seed, the, you know, um, cultivating the seed that was already in her so that now that she can compete on the collegiate level and you see the harvesting is her um, winning back-to-back championships in indoor as a hurdler, in, indoor season as a hurdler. Could I use that as an example? Yes, because here's the thing. The seed was planted, but here in cultivating, she's cultivating what was in her. Just like if I plant it, whether it's seeds of happiness, seeds of hope, seeds of success, seeds of love, it will come back in the abundance. But here it is. It's got to be nurtured. It's got to be harvested. It's got to, that whole cultivating, just like, and I know I'm not, I want to get ahead because I know the picture, but the next book says my, you know, cultivating our winning season for my other book, my next season is this season. But here's the thing. You want, you got to even ask yourself this. Uh, what will my life say of how I planted and nurtured the seeds I have sown? Planting one for one one season 
or will I plan to continue time after time? Now she's practicing, she's perfecting her craft, but it's for a far more greater. It's beyond the now. It's for where is she going in the future. And so she's cultivating and so she's preparing and so she's watering and nurturing what's in her. And so just like with this, uh, if I'm being watchful, I will know if the seed stop at a point or is it in a productive stage? And so if I don't handle this middle process, if I don't water, I don't nurture, I don't harvest, right. it's not going to grow. It's not going to move. Exactly. 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 And that is And there's a process so in, in the instructions to it. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. You have blessed me with this <laughs> um, and me relating, um, using her as an example, because I um, I look at how she started and how, like, she's in the middle by her being on a collegiate level now. And I know where her next aspiration is. I know what the next wish, I know where she wants to take this to the next level. Um, I know she monitors where she's sitting in the NCAA rankings, you know, um, I, I know she monitors that, and she'll tell me, you know, I'm, I'm here, and, and, and I need to be here so that I can see myself X, Y, and Z. And like you say, the seed, the harvesting, you know, that, that preparation, you know, um, the long hours of practicing, her getting up at 6 o'clock, and well, actually 5 o'clock in the morning, driving an hour to Savannah just to prepare her body um, physically and, you know, get her mind mentally prepared for this workout that lasts an hour and then shower go back to Effingham County, another almost 30 something you know, miles to get back home to shower and get ready for middle school, <laughs> you know? Um, and then like on all the spring breaks, she is, you know, um, perfecting her craft. So like I said, you know, the hurdles was not her main event. She was a long jumper and a, um, relay. She was doing the long jump and the relay and the 100 meter dash, but her coach saw something else in her as a hurdler. Then he saw something in her as a pole vaulter. Then he saw something else in her as a um, high jumper. <laughs> so she basically um, can compete in all of the events. And I guess with, with me and her dad as as, as the parents, you you water if you water the seed, like taking her to practice, and now the harvest is here. So that's how you know that's that's my takeaway on that. So here we have. You say you didn't want to jump ahead. Um, the your, my next season is due season, and I know I've been um, <clears throat> going to a virtual Bible study on Wednesdays well, with a pastor friend of mine, and he always tells us that, you know, that we are in our due season. What inspired you to write um, my next season is due season? Uh, it actually, and here's the revelation. Let me just give this one thing uh, in reference okay. to the power of the seed. The seed you plant must contain qualities that will enable it to grow even after extended time in various conditions. This is how powerful the seed is and why it's got to go process preparation and make sure it's sown into good ground. Even in the conditions, even in various conditions, the quality that it has, the power that it has, is still going to produce and shifting right into my next season to do season. Literally, God gave me this when he gave me the power of the seed and I didn't know it to about several weeks ago when he gave me the revelation of it is because when he talked about my season just changed, when he talked about the, the tree, the season, and here it is, later on I got the revelation when he gave me my next season, this new season, because here it is, process, preparation, and, and, and shifting from the power of the seed into my next season, this new season, which kind of parallels because it's still also dealing with that process, that preparation, and because uh, I prepared, and you got to go through the seasons, you got to endure one season to get to the next. I got to endure this season right here uh, that I planted, that I that I, I did all this work. Now that I, when I get into the next season, I can be looking for something greater. I can be looking for my harvest. I can recognize mm -hmm. that whole process that developing even in the posture, even in the cultivating and that waiting season where here it goes again with the waiting. And while I'm waiting on the manifestation and, and, and the thing about it is maintaining my proper perspective because 
my next season is due season is going to help you understand uh, how to get from one season to the next, but we must endure one to get to the next. And so even in pre- preparation of dealing, we, we last week here, we've seen, it seemed like we don't went through spring, summer, winter, and fall with decision changes of the season, but yet we're still in spring. Yet winter was still trying to hold on. Yet the next day it felt like we were in fall. Yet one day it felt like we were in summer. Exactly. That is so true. That is so true. So, um, here in Savannah, you, you dress you dress accordingly. Okay, what, see, like you said, you know, it, 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 winter still wants to hold on, but it's spring. Summer's trying to creep in. Fall kind of come back a little bit as well. Like I'm going to circle back around, make it feel like it's fall, you know, but. Um, and I understand that. I, you know, I understand that. I know a lot of times as Christians, or, 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 or believers and non-believers, um, we have the hard, um, that the the hard time of recognizing, you know, the process of preparation. How do you, as a life coach, um, foster that or or get us out of that 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 mindset? of not being able to recognize this, you know, um, the, the, the process preparation. One, even as a certified life coach, and um, one of the things is I say is I've got to get you from A to Z and not leave you stuck in the middle. And But there's process and preparation, and so we've got to first figure out where you are, where you need to go. And so that takes the process and preparation because you can't jump all the way here and not go from the beginning or go from the basics. You'll never uh, say you graduated and you've not gone through, say, have a GED or diploma and say you're going to finish college. You'll never even, even for the military, you've got to go through basic training. And so even for us, the thing is process and preparation. And one thing I love about this is, is with my next season is due season, it helps you to know that you've got to endure. The whole key of it is, is the mm. endurance piece and that season before to get to the next one. But here it is because God is in control of all the seasons, yet we mm-hmm. remain close in relationship with God. And it's rec- to recognize when we do get to our due season and just as the seasons change, listen, so life seasons change and it's vital that we prepare for each season and develop the right posture, the endurance, the process of our current season. So we, when we are transitioning to another, and so that's why the whole process and preparation is so key. And I always love using that, that illustration about the cake. Cause one, my pastor's wife, Lady Pender, is an amazing baker. And though she's perfected mm-hmm. her craft and she's ever learning it, and she can probably bake it with her eyes closed, but there's still process and preparation that you have to put the ingredients in. We need process and preparation in order for us to who we are and who we're going to be. And you cannot, so the, my next season is due season. It helps you to understand you cannot skip the season. You cannot skip the process and preparation and get a complete product. I know that some seasons are short and then there are periods where some seasons in our, you know, in our lives are very, very long. And, and sometimes I feel like I'm in a very long season. I'm, I'm not grieving. I'm, I'm not mourning. I'm out of the mourning season. You know, and I, you know, your grief, I, you know, I feel like you grieve forever, but it's how you handle the grief process, how you deal with mm-hmm. the grieving process. And I sometimes I feel like this has been a very, very long season, and I feel like my children are watching me, how I handle this this um this season it's been six years but it's been like a long six years to me and I, I feel like they're watching me how I handle um you know this grief and loss and then and in the process of this the pride at praying that God to um to I said you gave me this baby I need to, I, I want to see this baby grow and then the podcast came <laughs> And I asked God, I said, okay, you, it came quickly. You know, you know, you ask God to do things. Sometimes he moves real fast, and then he'll make you wait. <laughs> so it came kind of fast. And I asked God, I said, okay, you know, what what, what, um, what topics am I supposed to use? So, you know, I, I fasted, and, I, and I, I prayed and fasted, and then it was use what you have. You know, use what you've written. 
So that, so I, I pretty much use the topics that I've written on before. Um, and then I just love the fact how a lot of times when my guests come on, you know, what I've written maybe like six years ago, um, it parallel, our lives parallel one another. <laughs> you know, I've been finding out that out a lot, that our lives begin to parallel each other. So I just hope that in this season I'm, uh, that, I, that I have, cult- that I'm cultivating, um, you know, what God has placed in my, in, in my, in my lap and um, developing the right posture. How do we develop the right posture? One, we've always, and I tell people, everything starts in, 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 in with prayer and definitely seeking God and praying for direction and how you are handling things. And not only even with the developing and the right posture, because our posture says a lot to God. And, you know, um, no matter what I might be experiencing, my bishop said it tonight as we were having a meeting, it doesn't matter what I might be dealing, my circumstance, my, God is still greater. Uh, we still got to look at it. And I tell people from another perspective, from a positive perspective, even when it looks negative, you got to see the positive. Even when it looks like defeat, you got to see victory. And so even in my situation, I'm developing this right posture. My posture says a lot. They tell you, you know, if you're sitting in a chair, there's a certain way your posture so your back don't hurt. Uh, there's a certain way that you got to sit. And, you know, if you were in the middle, there's a certain posture, you know, if you're on uh, the front line or formation. And so there's a certain posture mm-hmm. that we have to have in our posture says a lot. And so I can't bend over if I'm looking for something else. And, you know, mm. and so that whole posture is going to say a lot. I can't bend over. Mm, mm, mm. I like that. I, I, I took so notes it's on that one. I can't bend over. Mm. If I'm waiting for God in my posture and says something totally, you know, I'm defeated or, if you know, saying that, you know, I'm waiting on this great God that I serve, but my posture, my actions, my prayer, it just says something totally different. And you got to see beyond the emotion. You got to see beyond the now and see the end result, which is victory. He gave us a gift called victory. He gave us the victory. And so I got to see beyond that. I got to see beyond the now. I got to see it from another perspective. I got to look in the lens of the camera and adjust it because sometimes the angle gets off. So I got to go back and look in it and adjust the angle and get the right angle. And so I can get back on track. And so my posture has a lot to do with everything. And then I can shift into a praise. I can shift into blessing him no matter what is going on. In my waiting season, in my night season, because listen, between Mm. night and day, it's only 60 seconds. And so in my night season, knowing that morning season is on the other side of the night season, and everybody's night season is different than, than, than one another. And yet, there's still a morning season. Even when the scripture said, weeping may endure for a night. I don't know how long your night season, but I know he did say that joy cometh in the morning. And so on the other side of the night season, there's a joy season. On the other side of the night season, there's a morning season. And so mm-hmm. while I'm waiting on my season to shift and change, I got to endure the one I'm in. But how you handle it is sure going to determine the next one or how determine your outcome. And cultivating. So in developing the right posture um, through care, prayer, we are cultivating um, in the waiting season. So cultivating, um, will that like be reading, um, building ourselves up, you know, mentally and emotionally? Would you say that? All of the above and, and every one of them. Um, everyone is different. So mine may be different from yours, but long as we're cultivating in a positive aspect and, and, and you know, we're preparing. And, and, and so the whole thing is, is that mine is different. You know, I may prepare different than you may prepare my posture, or, you know, or how I, my mindset or my perspective, I may look at it di- different than you. But the whole thing is, how am I perceiving it? How am I looking at this situation, this circumstance? How am I going to handle the season I'm in trying to get to the next season? Because we all got season. Amen. And do you believe that we could be in two seasons or several seasons at the same time? Well, it's a it it, it it's how you look at it. It's how you look. Um, at it. I know we deal with the seasons that are set, 
but you may be in one and he's shifting you to another, uh, depending on, cause you know, God, okay. is, he's so sovereign and so awesome. So how Amen. he does what he does, because we may be in one season, just like we said now, uh, today was a very nice breezy day. Uh, felt like we were still in spring. However, we know that the season is getting ready to shift, but yet I'm still in one season, but yet and still this season I'm coming upon is starting to look like something different. Amen. But what? yet what I say last week, it felt like we went mm-hmm. through all the seasons and yet we were <laughs> in the spring season, but it, it was cold. When I mean, it was cold. So you had to, the heat had to come on. And then one, you had to cut the heat off because it was almost 90 degrees. But then the other one, it felt like fall. So listen, we were in all these seasons, yet we were in spring. So it was like you being in, you're in, you're in the spring season, but then all these other seasons have popped up at the same time. <laughs> See, like we went through all the seasons <laughs> in one week. <laughs> so what, would you consider maintaining our proper perspective? So that would be like our outlook, our positive attitude. So some people are, some people have a negative perspective while they're in a certain season and others have a positive perspective. So weigh in on that for me. You must look, and, and from me and from my perspective, I've always learned and even learning even the more to always look at things from a positive perspective, even when it looks like it's a negative perspective or negative situation. Um, Because the more you look at it from a positive perspective, you're going to see a greater outcome. Because the more and more, just like with the children, the murmur and complaining, you may be repeating Mm -hmm. things. But it's it's, it's a mindset. And then once you start doing that, then the enemy, that's why I say guard your heart, your mind, your spirit, you, because now it, it starts in the mind, and that whole mindset is going to start telling you something different. And if you don't tap into prayer, if you don't tap into faith, it's going to shift you to a whole nother, uh perspective, a whole nother arena, because now you're starting to look at it from a negative situation. But yet, am I relying on the word? Am I the standing on the word and the promises of what he's declared? If he's greater, and I'm saying he's greater, but yet... It, 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 I, I'm looking at this, and like I said, everybody's perspective is different. But I always tell people, right. try to see it from another perspective. Or as my first lady, Lady Pender, says, you got to see God in everything, even with this whole pandemic. And even though so much has transpired, but then there's, there's so much things that happened that worked out in the benefit of so many people. And so you got to see it from another perspective. You got to see it different, even when it looks like it, it, it's defeat. You got to see victory. And you gotta speak life. You gotta speak. You gotta speak life. You you gotta speak with uh, uh, authority. You gotta speak with the right tone. You gotta speak with the right language. The right tone. You gotta have the right language. <laughs> right mind. You know, even even when we are wherever we are. Your body language says a lot. So when I talk about posture, what does our posture say to God? That he's not sovereign, that he's not going to do it, you know, because the enemy starts messing in. And next thing you know, you're talking defeat. But then what does the word say? You know, and then we're talking that, you know, or then we get stuck in the middle of the process and so many different other things. But yet and still, what does the word say? you got to keep a positive perspective. And I know hard as it may seem, this this weekend was rough. It was Mother's Day. My mother transitioned six years ago, but then I had to start thinking on that positive things and that what she's placed in me and the memories and all the love, all of that. Amen. And see it from another perspective and that knowing Amen. that her reward was greater. Amen. You know, that's just like... um. With me for Mother's Day, um, my birthday, Mother's Day, my birthday follows Mother's Day. So um, I've learned how to celebrate Mother's Day differently. I don't get in the, and I can, you know, the posture of, well, he's not, he's no longer here. What am I going to do now? Um, I almost literally forgot that it was Mother's Day because I was so busy doing other things and it was like so many good things were happening, (laughs) you know. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's Mother's Day. And because the day before, I helped my cousin 
catering business, and I just really, really had a really, really great time on Saturday evening. But then it overflowed into Sunday. Um, I had to do um, the Sunday school lesson, uh, Zoom Sunday school lesson on Sunday. So I forgot that it was Mother's Day until I remember. I was like, oh, today is Mother's Day. <laughs> so my son, he said, what are you doing today? And I said, oh, I'm not doing anything. I said, you know, I'm just going to stay home, do a little, you know, um, rearranging some things. And lo and behold, he took me out, you know, he took me out to um, to dinner. And I really, really had a nice time. I know that I'm celebrating um, the last six years of um, Reginald's passing. I'm, you know, we, I'm celebrating all of these things differently, but it's in a positive manner. You know, I, I don't I don't get stuck um, when celebrating, you know, the holidays and, and our birthdays. We just do things totally different. You know, like you said, your mom transitioned, what, six years ago as well? Um, you just, you know, you just glean from the positive things, you know, that they taught us and, and the love that they gave us and the love that they showed us and um, the love that we, you know, we gave them and showed them as well. And you as learn to look a, at it from another perspective and you learn, right. like you just say, you learn to channel it different. You learn to see channel it different, different, but then you learn mm-hmm. to look at it from a positive perspective even though we miss them, we love them, and, and yet it's still real and it still hurts, but yet you learn to channel it different. And when you channel it different, when you look at it from another perspective, it gives you a greater outlook. Yes, it, and I had a really, really great time about the homes. I really did. I enjoyed my son. So normally it would just be me and, my, and the two, and the three children and the grandchildren, but it was just the two of us together. And I, we were up top um, at the restaurant, and the breeze was nice. It was a nice sunny day, nice breeze. And I really, really enjoyed myself on Sunday. <laughs> I really did. Um, and I know that a lot of people um, with this pandemic, you know, there has been a lot of, um, you know, a lot of loss of life. Um, but also the positive has come out. There has been a lot of entrepreneurs. <laughs> you know, have become people very have creative in this season. They have become very, very, very creative. Um, and th- like I guess they recognize, okay, this is the season that we that I'm in. Um, would I've lost my job? I, well, what was a hobby that I like to do? Um, let me cultivate this hobby and make it a business and turn it into a you know a, a flourishing business. And I and I see that a lot. I'm just so proud of a lot of you know of the African American young African Americans that have um, ventured out to be entrepreneurs. And my son has been one of those. Um, <laughs> he has been one of those as well. Um, how can we find you? What social media outlets can we find you on? Um, I can be reached on all the social media, Twitter, Dr. E, um, IG, um, Dr. E underscore Holmes, um, Facebook, Eric Holmes. Um, so all LinkedIn. Um, Eric Holmes. So you can find me on all of the social all media the outlets. Social media outlets. Where can we purchase the Power of the Seed and my next season is due season? Uh, they are available on Amazon. Or if you message me, I will be glad to sign one and send one because um, I do have some. Um, but okay. um, if you go on Amazon, um, you can definitely um, find them there. Uh, uh, Walmart website, Target's website, and it's another one. Um, so, and if anybody is in, of course, in the Maryland area, they are in the library. In the library. I have thoroughly um, enjoyed tonight um, that confirmation on the word victory. I had to write it down in my notes, victory. That was, one of, that was the word that was given to me about three weeks ago, victory. And I'm on the journey. Um, like you said, it may be short or it may be easy, but it's all a part of the process. Um, and most definitely, we have to stand firm in our faith. We have to stand firm in our faith. And the relationship, we must have a relationship with God. That what I like to do now, <laughs> yes, it is very, very critical. Before we always close um, prayers with Veronica, always, um, ask our guests if they don't, will they lead us into prayer, a closing prayer? Absolutely. Again, thank you so very much for this um, humble opportunity to share um, on your show and um, truly to positive power. Um, I am ever grateful, humbled, and honored 
And um, yes, thank you so very much. And You're again, welcome. let us let us go to the throne. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we come to say thank you. And we bless your wonderful name. God, we thank you for this time of sharing and just talking about how magnificent, magnificent you are. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, and your love. Father, even now, God, continue to look upon Veronica. Continue to even look upon positive power. Father, look upon Amen. even this broadcast. So, God, look upon our homes and our families, our pastors and our leaders. Father, we thank you even now oh. for your grace and your mercy. Even now, God, build us up in our most holy faith of God strengthen mm. us even now that God even as we are in the waiting period or even all if we are in the middle of the process God that we will see it to the end oh God that victory shall be ours oh God we thank you even yes, even now oh God for how faithful you've been oh God you are great and you are mighty and there is nobody like you thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do father for every listener oh God that may have listened and meet them at the point of their need allow prayer to go where I can't go prayer will do what I can't allow your word to go yes, where I can't yes. and your work will do what I can't now even now kind father allow us to rest in you even now though God rest in your word and rest in your promises father we thank you even now for all that's been said and done and all that you shall do father we thank you we give you glory and we give you the honor and we give you the praise God meet us in the morning as we shall open up just to say thank you Lord for look thank what the Lord, Lord has done God we give you glory mm. honor and praise it's in the mighty name mm. in the powerful name in the strong name it's in the saving name it's in the name above all names it's in the name Name that conquered death and the grave, the name mm. that is in it, but the name that Jesus. is coming back again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we thank you Jesus. and we praise you in Jesus' name. Yes, thank God and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for tuning in, my listeners. While well, I'm with my guest tonight, Dr. Eric L. Holmes, um, with the power of the seed, and my seed, my next season is due season. Thank you, Jerry Royce and the Positive Power of Double XI family, media family. Thank you for tuning in and have a good evening. And listen, anybody, I'll post this Friday if y'all can tune in to the virtual book launch of the one I co author, Soulful Affirmations. And I look forward, it will be at seven o'clock. And I'm super excited. You said Soulful Affirmations? Soulful Affirmations, yes. I co-authored with the visionary Miss Cheryl Pelot Williamson and some amazing authors. And the virtual okay. book launch is this Friday at 7 p.m. And so I'll post it to the page again. But yeah, if you can join us, we look forward to this amazing divine assignment. Will you post it to my page as well? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. What I'll do is I'll share it on my personal page and then I'll share it on my other page for Veronica as well. I'll just share it on my social media. <laughs> Thank you so very much. You're so welcome. I'm so grateful to God that you, you know, came on tonight. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Thank you, Batman. Yes. Have a power. Can you feel the power? Yes. Can you, I was getting ready to say that. Can you feel the power? <laughs> Thank you. Good night. All right. Blessings. Bye-bye. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you for joining us, Pearls with Veronica. Thank you for tuning us on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us and share the file. I'm Jerry Rose Live Worldwide, and welcome to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Radio. You are listening to Jerry Rose Live Worldwide Podcast.